Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. Now, not all of our invited speakers were able to make it in person to the great telco debate this year, but they still wanted to take part. So, joining me now as an expert witness for the debate Open RAN and Closed Ranks is Jose Antonio Aranda, who is Global Innovation Director at Cellnex Telecom. Hello, Jose, very good to see you again, and thanks so much for doing this. Uh, First question I'd like to ask you is, what do you think is the opportunity for Open RAN in terms of RAN sharing via a neutral host provider, you know, such as Cellnex? Yes, for us, Open RAN uh, will allow to uh, strengthen our relationship with uh, mobile operators, uh, with potentially the possibility of us expanding in the value chain. Uh, we all know that uh, 5G uh, pushes for technology ramp up uh, with high complexity and scale. Uh, the mobile operators are uh, forced to grow in capex uh, due to the new needs for diversification uh, while they are locked uh, into the previous network investment. Uh, uh, and at the same time, uh, they need to, uh, uh, to monetize. They have pressure and the output for, from the customers are not growing enough. So uh, from the host uh, uh, provider perspective, um, run sharing will mean that we will be able to uh, offer the mobile operators disaggregation uh, to keep the minimum functionality at the sales site and uh, remove part of uh, the infrastructure from the masts, uh, reduce uh, capex, uh, trying to abstract the software and the hardware, uh, and at the same time, increase automation and uh, reduce the site footprint, uh, helping the mobile operators uh, to reduce also OPEX. Uh, so this uh, technology open run uh, will give us the possibility to extend our portfolio of services to adjacent assets. Uh, we'll be able to create new shelters or cabinets or if it's bigger, edge data centers, where we will be able to offer uh, to the mobile operators uh, real estate services uh, like uh, power, cooling, space. And at the same time, uh, we will be able to offer connectivity to those places uh, with fiber interconnection, uh, increasing the connectivity needs uh, using uh, different technologies in mid hall and front hall. Uh, and the potential of growing in the value chain as well, uh, providing if the mobile operators uh, want to share hardware, uh, providing servers, transmission, and potentially also offering virtualization, uh, entering the software stack, uh, and uh, trying to integrate and orchestrate some of the services on behalf of the mobile operators. So what's it going to take to get Open RAN over the line and, and bring its much promised innovation and agility to network operators? Yes, it's going to take uh, still uh, some more years. Um, uh, there are different promises in the Open RAN space, like having a wider ecosystem uh, and not being able to rely on a smaller uh, amount of suppliers. But the reality is that uh, still Open RAN have a uh, few uh, stable suppliers. Uh, also, uh, the scalability of the solutions is not there yet. Uh, there needs to be a little bit of more work. Uh, faster deployment uh, is a key aspect. Uh, for instance, one of the things that we have seen uh, that it takes uh, months uh, to have everything working be be because of the different integrations. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, the open run performance uh, uh, have a little bit uh, to go uh, compare with a classic run. Uh, we have a lot of expectations in functionalities like RIG. Uh, we have a lot of expectations on the integration of uh, open run with edge computing capabilities. Uh, and also we have a lot of expectations uh, on the work that uh, interoperability between different vendors is being done. You mentioned that there's still some work to be done. So do you feel that more needs to be done on Open RAN to address the commercial and economic challenges faced by network operators, rather than perhaps its current focus on more technical issues? Yes, from the neutral host perspective, we see that the ecosystem is still a little bit immature and there is still a lot of work to, that, to be done on commercial aspects. We have been uh, trying to demonstrate the capabilities of open running different scenarios uh, related to our commercial activities. 
such as uh, the possibility of offering small cells and uh, DAS systems uh, in the UK, for instance. And we have uh, been, uh, uh, we have struggled to find solutions uh, in the market that uh, enables us to offer such service. Uh, also, things like a multi-mobile operator or millimeter wave, we have tried in Barcelona in one of our trials. Uh, again, uh, we see that uh, the market hasn't got uh, too many solutions in this, and there's a lot of uh, work to be done. On uh, uh, artificial intelligence, we have seen as well uh, that RIC was very promising. We have tried to offer uh, energy savings or uh, balancing loading uh, between different mobile operators. Again, uh, it, it, we haven't found uh, too many solutions in the market. And also uh, the last one uh, under the frank promise, uh, we have tried to see whether open run could be used uh, to provide interoperability between private and public networks. Still a, a little bit of work uh, to be done yet. Jose Antonio, absolutely fascinating. Thank you very much for your insights there and for joining us and taking part in the great telco debate. And you can watch all of our virtual expert witnesses along with full recordings of each of the sessions from this year's great telco debate right here on Telecom TV. For now though, thank you for watching and goodbye.